So the big question, Joe, you've talked about the limitations of aging. We've talked about having to redefine goals, but how do we adapt our training to maintain peak performance? How do we adapt our training to offset that decline in VO2 max, the muscle atrophy and the increased body fat? What strategies and systems do we use to make that possible? Yeah. Yeah, there's there's different answers to that question. It kind of depends. If we if we just take for for example, for one little moment here, we take the idea of just muscle mass being lost. If that's the issue, um, then we start lifting weights. That's all there is to it. Um, muscle mass is not going to come back by itself. You got to do something about it. So the first thing to start doing is getting is lifting weights. And, and muscle mass, as I mentioned, for cyclists is probably not going to be so much the legs. Your legs are probably going to do really well. It's going to be the upper body. So if you've never done upper body weightlifting in your in your whole sport career because you're a cyclist and you didn't need your upper body, in fact, you didn't want any upper body, now's the time to start doing upper body strength training. Anything you want to do, that's fine. You know, bench presses, curls, pull-ups, abdominals, planks, all this stuff, all the stuff that does from the waist up, you need to be doing that. That's number one. you got to be starting. And to, to drill to drill into that and make it actionable for people, how often does somebody need to be getting into the gym? Like, what's the minimum effective dose? I would say twice a week is the minimum. Um, doesn't I, I wouldn't say there's a time. It's not like riding your bike where you have a time. You set like an hour and a half or two hours. It's, that time doesn't mean anything in the gym. Only thing it means anything here is how many reps are you doing? What what are the loads? It doesn't matter how long it takes to do the workout. If you can get it done, so what I did many years ago, I started doing this a long time ago. So I just I got just really tired of waiting in the gym for the machine to open up so I could do the next the next exercise in my set. So I decided I was going to make my garage into my into my gym, and so I did. So now we we actually went out and bought a new house because of that. I wanted a three car garage, even though we only have two cars. So I have a a bay in my garage to set up my my weight room. And every year I add something more to my weight room. So it's now becoming rather nice. And uh, so I get out there twice a week and it's like a, you know, it's like a 10 second commute. No, no waiting in line to use the next machine. I just <laughs> do it whenever I want to. And I'm done in, in typically about 20 to 30 minutes. I've got the whole thing done. I do it twice a week. So it's, it doesn't take really hardly any time of my day at all. And it's kind of like brushing my teeth. I just go do it. I don't think about it. I don't say, well, the, I, I got to remember to, to, uh, Go lift weights tomorrow morning. I don't have to do that at all because I know I'm going to do it. I don't tell myself to brush my teeth tomorrow morning. I just do it. And it's the same thing. So let's go out and lift weights. So you would see this as a non-negotiable because I know you've worked with World Tour riders and I have have World Tour riders on the podcast all the time. And the jury for them, it's a little bit out on the gym. Yes, it's beneficial. And they try to get to the gym as much as possible. But logistically, it's mainly only possible in the off season because of their travel schedules and going to altitude camps. They don't get into the gym 12 months of the year. But for the aging athletes, you would see this as essential rather than optional. Oh, you bet. Yeah, the the, the young athletes, especially the, the elite athletes, you know, they're in a different world. They're not really humans. They're Martians or something. I'm not sure what they are, but they're different. <laughs> And they don't need the same things that that the older athlete needs. The older athlete needs to really focus on building muscle. Otherwise, you're going to wind up. And and, and all, not only does it build muscle, by the way, lifting weights also makes the bones stronger. So that when you fall, eventually you're going to fall down. You're going to have a crash on that bike. Um, if you fall when you're 25 years old, it's probably not going to be a problem. You're going to lose some skin. You're going to be bounced right back up and probably get right back in the saddle again. But you take a fall, even a fairly minor fall when you're 65 years old, big difference. Now you've got a huge chance of having broken a bone and that can set you back tremendously. So lifting weights also helps to build stronger bones. So it's kind of like a double whammy. You get two, two benefits out of this for, you know, for maybe an hour a week, you know, two 30 minute sessions, you're getting really a lot of benefits out of this because it's got to be consistent. You can't do it tomorrow and then not do it for the next three weeks. It's got to be every week you're doing this. And would you look to periodize that into your training or is this just something that happens, you know, like a uh, maintenance all season round? The athletes who are, uh, who are still racing need to periodize it. Um, I won't go into a lot of details there. There's, there's quite a bit to it, but I did that in my uh, cyclist training Bible. I talked about how to periodize your strength journey because mo- the problem most athletes have is they think 
when they come to the race season, for example, they have to stop lifting. Well, that's really not the case. We just have to modify how you're lifting, how often you're lifting. That's and what what the loads are and how much, what the reps and sets are. But to modify all those things, and it's that's a whole long list of topics, which probably is not going to cover here, but so they can see that in my book, it explains how to do all that. But you need to keep on lifting year round if you're an aging athlete. This was an extract from my conversation with Mr. Joe Frail. If you enjoyed this extract, you should please check out the full video, which is up here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.